thank you for coming on AURN and, and talking with me today. One thing I have loved to see is all the black men that I have seen coming and coalescing around this Harris Walls campaign, especially when we have heard so much rhetoric that black men are not supporting. Being here in this atmosphere, and I've seen you day one, two, three, and we on day four, what are the sentiments that you are feeling being here? Well, it's a couple things I need to, and I need to, you know, couch those in reality. The first one is I'm a political junkie. And as a political junkie, to see the party get so many things right, not just as it pertains to black men, but in general, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing because we have a history of flubbing up. So that's beautiful. But as a representative, the founder of Black Male Voter Project, I'm obligated to acknowledge that what we're seeing as it pertains to black men excitement are super voters. There are no sporadic black men in this space. And what I mean by that are the brothers who don't vote regularly. So we need to acknowledge one or two things. One, there are 9.6 million black men in this country that are registered to vote. And of that 9.6 million, 52 percent have not voted in the last four federal election. It is our job to make this energy pass over to those brothers and make them comfortable with the idea, with the idea that politics can work for them, even though there's a long history of politics not working for them. Now that is not a critique of sister vice president. It is a critique though of the Democratic Party as it stands, right? Like we have 154 years of black men suffering because of politics. And people might think that statistic that I called out at the beginning, the 52% that have not voted, as a critique of black men, but it's not. It's a critique of traditional transactional tactics that are stale and white. Let's talk about that 52%. So in going after that 52%, what are the tactics? What, what, are, what are the strategies that you, that you are using to go after that 52%? Yeah, so I think what happens is people usually, and I'm not accusing you of this, People usually just want to know what issues are most important to black men. Knowing the issues is not enough. You have to be a trusted messenger. There are not a lot of people here, even the black men you see, that are considered trusted messengers for the demographic of brothers who are sitting out elections. Define trusted so, messenger. Someone that they that. trust. It's that simple. Someone that these brothers trust. These brothers who are not omegas or, or alphas or kappas. These brothers who are not college educated. These brothers who make up the real regular black men in this country. The majority of black men in this country are not college educated. They are suffering, living with their backs against the razor edge of the wall. And those brothers don't and would not be comfortable in this space. And it's, and it's built that way. America has a high tolerance for black men's pain. This is why we have the shortest life of anybody, not just in this country, but 105 out of the 190 countries that are in the world. It is why black men can be killed on TV and no one is bothered by it in the next news cycle. This is why our black boys are suspended and expelled at higher rates than anybody. It is why black men are the only demographic in this country that can be born rich or middle class and still likely to experience poverty. So all of these are political issues that have not been addressed for black men in the whole context of the 15th Amendment and 154 years since it's passed. So if your program is not a year-round program and you're not talking to black men when there's no election to punch, when there's no ballot to cast, if you don't have a relationship, then whatever you say to black men is gonna sound fake and fraud. So what do you say to, to this campaign, to this movement that we're seeing right now, to say, this is what I need you to do, love it, here for, but this is what I need, this is what our demand is. Yeah, I think for this campaign, it is more important not to brag about spending hundreds of million dollars on TV and take that money and invest it in local organizations that do year-round work with the demographic that we're talking about. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing in the community, and I really mean that. Thank you for representing the voices that aren't always represented and aren't always heard, and many times suppressed, like you said before. And we want to support you in the work that you do. So thanks for coming on AURN. Thank you for having me. I want to say one more thing. Listen, I'm not disrespecting College Educated Brothers, Divine Nine, or 100 black men, but I'm trying to tell you there are a million more black men that are not represented in these brothers in suits around here. I love it. Thank you.